What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Nandan. I'm a senior in industrial engineering and economics here at UW-Madison. And in today's video, we're going to cover academic stuff about UW-Madison. Everything that I wish that I knew when I was, you know, applying for or deciding which university to go to. That said, this is going to be a three to four part series that I'm breaking down because there are questions about academics, life at UW, then, you know, housing, about the university, work, internships, co-ops, everything about it. So today in talking about academics, I'm going to break this down into like two broad sections. First one's going to be double major or declaring your major. Kind of stuff and then the second one is going to be general class information now note if you're an international student this also has a couple of questions that touches upon that stuff so stick around and watch first question how easy is it to switch majors for my experience and even other people that i've spoken to it is fairly simple unless you are switching either from something else to computer science or something else to the college of engineering like any engineering major itself because those two have like slightly higher stringent requirements and i think it's the same for the business school uh, but otherwise generally any other major speak to your advisor it's they're pretty accommodating and understanding whenever you want to talk about anything academic related yeah basically in summary it's easy to switch your major a little backstory on me i came into uw madison as a biomedical engineering direct entry major so but i did end up switching which i wanted to do to mechanical that didn't happen so i switched to industrial engineering and then took on economics as a double major i think in my either late sophomore year or early junior year one of those basically it was a little late double majoring is that an extra charge is it easy and would you recommend it so there is no extra charge if you take on a double major the only issue with it is that you probably have to stay an extra semester so if you take on a double major or are like looking to do so then probably consider it earlier in your career so if you're like a freshman or a sophomore early sophomore year at least i would say then would be like a good time to pick it uh, a little later you can still take it there's going to be no extra charge but you might have to if you can't finish it in four years then the extra semester you stay will be be like one more semesters worth tuition fee uh, other than that there's no like fee to declare a double major or something it's all the same cost for everything that said double majors are not easy some of the classes might overlap like if you're a computer engineering major computer science might overlap with it a lot because you might have to take like just two more classes to double major on that subject i think for industrial engineering it's the same for data science but i, I found that out too late plus i don't think we had an option for that before so would you recommend it would i recommend a double major of course like if you're interested in the stuff then take a double major um and nowadays like frankly if you have like even a slight knack for like something CSE or data science or like anything else just pick up a double major it, it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt you let me put it that way this is also provided you have the funds for it so someone once asked me is the course load light for freshmen like what is the workload like on a day-to-day -day basis in your first semester at UW Madison. Now you can take as many or as few classes as you would like. Actually, there's a cap on the many you can take. It's a 12 credit to 18 credit limit, which would go anywhere from, uh, I think like four to six classes, which would be your range. I think 14 credits is like a good spot, which is basically either three or f sorry, four or five classes. And that would give you a good enough time to like get you one, get used to the classes. Say you have some AP credit or IB credit that you came in with. You could just, if you don't want to take Calc 1, for example, and you came in with credit for that, you could just advance to Calc 2. Or you can choose to take Calc 1 again because you know your GPA is going to be good and then take Calc 2 the next semester. I know a couple of friends that did that. And honestly, it's like, it was like kind of a smart move because your GPA does, your GPA is not affected by any credit you come in with so if you came in with like ap or ib credits then those don't actually affect your in-college gpa because you didn't do it there but they do give you credit saying that the class is done so it, it doesn't count as like 4.0 it just counts as you came in with that credit to answer the question i would say the course load is fairly light for freshmen but then the first year classes also do have they're called weed out classes especially if you take like chemistry or biology or something like that um these classes are be, kind of sort of designed to be like hard so that it weeds out the people that are not actually interested in the subject um, it is a little intense. I hated chemistry. Like I, my GPA tanked solely because of chemistry. The reason I didn't take it in high school was because I thought I didn't have to ever take it again. And I was so wrong. Another thing to consider would be class size. Are there any small classes that UW Madison has or are they all really big for the first year? Most of your first year lectures are going to be in like huge lecture halls. Um, for example, CS200, which I accidentally took that I, I'm not joking. I accidentally took a CS class the same way. There's other classes like chemistry, but all of the lectures in your first year will mostly be like 200 ish people in like those massive lecture halls. You see, like if you're in, in the engineering school, you'll know 1800 is like this huge engineering hall. Well, it's actually, that's why it's called engineering hall. Oh my fuck. I'm an idiot. How did I get into UW, dude? Because uh, your first year is all like, you know, catching, getting everyone up to the same base level of knowledge. And then after that, you go to like specialize into whatever you want to. Now you might be thinking how hard it is to maintain a good GPA. And 
I was thinking like literally the same thing. And back then I considered good above 3.5, but then you sometimes it doesn't work out. So something above like three, in my opinion, is like good. Uh, you need to balance your time well, and th- that's why I recommend not taking 18 credits your first semester here because like I took 18, uh, 17 or 18 the second, and that wasn't like great. Like a bunch of other stuff happened back then, and then my GPA wasn't like as good as I wanted it to be. So. If it's your first year, take 14 to 15 credits. I would say that's like the sweet spot. It gives you enough time to go like explore, do your thing, do anything other than studying. But then it's also like a good amount of stuff to start with. Honestly, if you want to start with 12, please feel free because it's like that you will have a life if you start with 12. <laughs> Speaking of grades, someone once asked, what grades do you have to maintain at UW-Madison to keep your major after freshman year? And how does that align with the grade requirements for international students to maintain their visa? So international students are here on like an F1 visa. It could be other master's undergrad. In all cases, anything above a 2.0 is considered non-probationary, which means like you're not in like a bad academic standing if you get above that, which pretty much means don't consistently get C's in a class and you'll basically be fine. Like your grade doesn't affect your visa status in any way unless you really bomb everything. In which case, like you're probably going to get kicked out anyway. But like, yeah, please don't do that. How are the professors? How helpful are they? And do they give time to students? So most of the professors are pretty friendly. They're open to like you just coming up after lecture and chatting with them or even office hours. Most of them hold that. I have not personally gone for a lot, but the ones that I did go to are pretty helpful. Like they're willing to take the time to like personalize feedback i guess to like any doubts you have in concepts and stuff that said some profs are not the best like there is a particular class in the flow of the industrial engineering major one of the mandatory ones which isn't as great as one would expect it to be in majority's opinion basically me and all the people i know which is like three but for the most part most of them are nice fun interesting and try to make the lectures fun because the first year you don't want to get bored more about professors. Can you collaborate with professors on any research projects that they're doing? The answer to this question varies because some of them don't have current research projects. Like they just either they have something that is too complex for a freshman to start with, or they just don't have anything currently that they're working on or need assistance with. Um, that said, I know like two people that worked with uh, professors on a certain project, and th- I guess they're pretty open to that. I didn't personally ask any, so I can't give advice, specific advice or experience from that. But from what I've heard, they're like pretty open to uh, any sort of research projects, and most of them really like what they're doing. So if you go up and chat about like some research that they're doing, they'll honestly like really enjoy it. Like there's a machine learning class I'm taking this semester, and the prof is like, you can tell the dude is like passionate about what he's doing. He'll go on and on for like hours if you about like one very very specific topic. Like if you <laughs> if you ask. Him. That's honestly kind of nice to see. Would you say STEM courses are very competitive? I've heard grading is done on a curve, so does that lead to a lot of competition? This is one of my main digs with STEM courses is that, or any course that is curved, is that regardless of how well everyone does, suppose literally out of 100 people, everyone gets like 90 plus, then a curved class will always be such that 20% get an A, like another 20% get an A, B, 20% get a B, and so on. So that is always curved in a way such that the top X percent are the ones that achieve highly, everyone else is bad. That, in my opinion, can be good and bad. Good if you're like one of those top 20% bad, if you're like literally anything else. And STEM courses at UW especially are highly, highly competitive. I wouldn't say that the curve specifically leads to the competition though. I would say that because of progression and everyone needing to get above like a 3.5 GPA for the engineering school for certain majors, I would say that leads to people being very, very competitive in terms of like, I guess just comparing your grades overall in general. How can I get ahead of classes? Do I learn a programming language? Getting ahead of classes, honestly, I would say don't before you start your freshman year, like your every class is only for that particular semester it's in. Um, Unless it's like programming, which like builds upon itself or other like senior design and junior design classes. Honestly, if you if you really do want to get like ahead of stuff, then I would say cool, take like a Udemy course or something on a certain programming language. But there's really no necessity to get ahead of work in your freshman year. If you want, do it once the semester starts, but not before. At least I think. Coming from India, how did you find the transition to GPA based grading? Are the classes competitive? So the second part of the question, like the competitive part, I've answered before the answer is yes. So the classes here are up like pretty competitive your first year, but for the first part of your question, as in how did I find the transition to GPA based grading? I was initially in an IB system. So our, which we, if you don't know is International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. The whole way the IB system is structured is very, very similar to what university is. So transitioning from the IB to university was not much of a big deal because everything just like rolled over in some, in most senses, like 80% of the workflow was the same. The transition to GPA overall wasn't like a big 
thing that I noticed. So I guess it's it's just a different way of doing things, which I I mean you kind of have to deal with if you choose to come to the US. What is a senior design or capstone project compared to IB's extended essays and internal assessments? Is it more of a drag? Senior design or the capstone project is basically wrapping up the or entirety of like your college curriculum, like your four years in industrial engineering, for example, will be wrapped up with like this project that you work on with a company. Um, we had it in ISY 450, which is a senior design class. We worked with a company to help improve a certain process that they had an issue with. And that is using like the whole problem solving framework and other elements that you learn throughout your classes in industrial engineering. Honestly, it was a pretty cool project. I enjoyed it. In some other classes, you have the freedom to choose your capstone project where you can literally work on any problem that you find interesting. Um, most people find the capstone project a little challenging. I agree to that too, uh, solely because it's it, not that your entire graduation lies upon that, but then it is a pretty crucial element of getting a degree in either engineering or anything else. If I'm not sure if other degrees have capstone projects, but yeah. What are the most enjoyable classes you've taken? So the one that I'm taking this semester is ISY 521, which is the machine learning in industrial engineering class. And honestly, the stuff that we're learning in this is like so applicable out of the box and it's like you can use it in so many aspects of stuff not only like traditional machine learning options but even like logist uh, sorry uh yeah logistics and all of that stuff like supply chain management logistics um i have a couple of friends that are doing those kind of related things and it's just nice to see everything click together uh that said if you're an econ major and you're taking a class with david johnson good fucking choice like that prof is like the most <laughs> um he teaches Econ 101, 301, all of that stuff. So he is the most amped up and probably his like enthusiasm for economics is the reason I explored it more and chose it as a double major. If you found value in this video, consider leaving a like, subscribing and commenting more questions that you have. So those are the academic related questions I got for UW Madison. In the next video, we're going to talk about life at UW Madison. Madison. <laughs> Fuck, that's hilarious. Now, in the next video, we're going to be talking about life at UW Madison, both as an international student or otherwise. What can you do as a freshman at UW? What is stuff about housing? You know, more information about UW Madison as a, as the university. What stuff should you get when you come here? Um, what internships can you get? Co-ops and so on. So those are going to be coming in the in the up and coming weeks. Look forward to chatting with you and seeing what questions you have. In the meantime, peace. This is in a very shady place. If this falls. All of my electronics are gone. So you see, yes, it's been four years.